In this video, we'll talk about graphs of trig functions. In particular, we'll be talking about sine and cosine. We'll talk about other trig functions in another video that I'll put up later. So let's start with sine. Sine and cosine behave very differently, and, and for the most part, you can use them somewhat interchangeably as far as graphs. A lot of things that apply to sine also apply to cosine with just some slight differences. So first, let's talk about sine, and then we can talk about the differences between the two. So if we look at sine, if we're on the unit circle, if we're looking at the coordinates on this unit circle, hypotenuse is always 1, and we're looking at y, because sine, in this case of theta, is y. Technically y over 1, but y would be the same thing. So if we think about as we start at 0 and go around what our y coordinate is doing, if we look at 0 when theta is 0, y is also 0. So meaning it goes through the origin if I was to start graphing it. Okay, if we look at 90 degrees, or if we're thinking radians, pi over 2, my y coordinate is 1. Okay, keep going around the circle as I get to 180. Again, my height of my triangle is back to zero. And then as I go down here to 270 degrees, I'm at negative one. And then likewise, when I come back to 360, I'll be back to zero. So filling in what we've got, it's going to kind of swoop around here, and then it's going to continue in that manner. It'll be a periodic function. Every 360 degrees, it's going to start repeating itself. So we could say that the period of sine, by default, is 360 degrees, or, if we're thinking radians, 2 pi radians. It also has what we call an amplitude. So if we're looking at this distance from the midline to the peak, that's 1 by default. And we'll talk about what that means here in just a second. So now that we have a basic idea of what sine looks like on a default level, we can kind of apply our function transformations that we've used all year. So if we're looking at this, the two that are different are going to be the A and the B. The A is your amplitude. And remember, that's the distance from midline to your peak or valley, however you want to think about it. So by default, it's 1. However, if I have y equals 2 sine of x, then it'll oscillate between 2 and negative 2 as opposed to 1 and negative 1. If we're looking at <coughs> b, <coughs> this is what they call the frequency. And I like to think of it as it affects the period. So... You can determine the period using B, and if you're thinking degrees, 360 degrees divided by whatever B is, is going to equal your period. So say it was sine of 2x, it's going to go around the circle two times faster, so it's only going to take 180 degrees to move itself around the circle. Likewise, if it was a fraction, it would actually take longer to go around the circle. So the period would be stretched out. Okay, and the last two kind of deal with what we've talked about all year. Let's start with D. This is your vertical shift. And that one has not changed since we were talking about quadratics. Positive is going to move it up. Negative is going to move it down. Just as you would expect. And then the last one in here. It's technically called the horizontal shift, 
but sometimes it's also called the phase shift. So it behaves exactly the same. If you call it a horizontal shift, I'm fine with that. I'm just letting you know that a lot of textbooks will use the terminology of a phase shift. So if you hear phase shift, just think it's a horizontal shift. And remember, that is backwards from what we would think. Negative is going to move it right, and positive is going to move it left. And the thing about this, and we'll talk about this shortly with cosine, we can use all of these, the amplitude, the frequency, the horizontal shift, the vertical shift, all this thinking applies to cosine. Cosine just looks a little bit different than sine in terms of where it starts. And we'll talk about that here in a second. But otherwise, all this thinking will apply to cosine. So for the most part, these two can be used interchangeably. It just is going to change where you start. So before we talk about cosine, let's talk about an example where we are graphing or sketching a graph of a sine function like this. So I'm going to make a list. I've got my amplitude. I've got my period. I've got a horizontal shift. And I've got a vertical shift. Okay. So I'll start with the vertical shift first. <clears throat> this one's pretty easy. It's going to move it up three. The horizontal shift is going to move it, it's positive, so it's going to move it left, and 30 degrees. Okay, the period. If I'm looking at this, this is going to take, okay, 360 divided by 4, which is going to be 90. So that would be my period, 90 degrees. And then my amplitude, well, is just 2. Okay, so if I was to start with a sketch of this, let's start with our coordinate grid. I know I need to go up three, and I want to make a dotted line there. That's where my midline is. So I'm going to start here, and I'm going to kind of work my way up the list. Okay, the next thing I'm going to look at is the horizontal shift. It moved left 30 degrees. So I'm going to make a tick at 30 degrees. This is essentially my new zero point, meaning that I know, since we're talking about sine, it went through zero, zero. That means it has to start hitting at the midline when I'm looking at the horizontal shift. That's telling me where it starts at the midline. Okay, after that, <clears throat> I'm going to consider the amplitude and the period. So if I'm looking at this, I know that I have to be able to go up to and down to as I go here. So I'll be bouncing between 5 and 1 in this case. Okay, I also know that the period is 90. So after 90 degrees, it'll have to have gone up and down below the line and then back to zero. So if I think about at 90 degrees past this 30 here, we're looking at a positive 60 degrees. So I'll have had to go up and down and back through. So if I think about it, halfway between these two, that'll be another point at the midline. Which if I think about the halfway between 30 and 60, that would be, well... Half of 90 would be 45, so 45 plus 30, that would be 15 degrees. I know I'm going to be back to zero on all three of these points. Okay, then I think about halfway between 30 and 15, or negative 30 and 15. <coughs> that would be, oh, it would be fractional, but I think it will be 22.5 degrees past 30. And then likewise, I'll have another one where I'll be back down to 1 in between the 15 and the 60. So it's going to go up like this, down, and then it's going to repeat itself as I go here. That's one example of how I can use all of these to graph sign. And if you didn't get that on the first time around, rewind, give it another shot, and take your time, piece it together. Okay, let's go over cosine really <coughs> quick on a fundamental level. So if we tie it back to the unit circle, if I think about cosine, again, we're going to make our right triangle. We're looking at this, the base, the x coordinate of this point right here. So if I look at when theta is 0, my x is technically 1. It's all the way over to the right. So cosine starts at its peak.
And then if I go around, hit 90 degrees, I'm at zero. And then as I go around again to 180 degrees, I'm at negative one. And then as I go around another chunk, I'm again back to zero. So at 207 degrees, I'm at zero. And if I go another 90 degrees back to 360, I'm back up to one. So cosine bears a very similar shape to sine. It just starts at its peak. Whereas sine starts more at the zero line or at the midline if we have a vertical shift. And this, very much like sine, will continue. One more example here. I figure we'll go through an example of cosine just to show you how they are very similar and yet a little bit different. So again, we're looking at cosine. I'm going to make my list very same to how I do sine. I'm going to look at amplitude, period, horizontal shift, and then my vertical shift. Okay. So again, I'm going to start with my vertical shift. In this case, it's negative 1, so it goes down 1. Horizontal shift, it's negative, so it's going to move it right. So it's going to go right 10 degrees. The period, in this case, it's a fraction. So this is telling me that I'm going to take 360 divided by 1 half, which is technically going to make my period longer. So it's going to be 720 degrees. It's going to be more stretched out in this case. And then the last but not least, we have the amplitude, and that is 3. <coughs> so if we're looking at a graph... Let's go ahead and make one here. We're going to have our x-axis and our y-axis, technically. So if we're going through this, let's start with our vertical shift. It goes down 1, so we know that at negative 1, that's our midline. We know that we're going to go up 3 from that and down 3 from that. So I can go ahead and make little notes to myself here, I guess. So we're going to need to mark at 2. And we're going to need to mark at negative 4. So it's going to bounce between these two lines as we go. <clears throat> okay. Then what I'm looking at here, it goes right 10 degrees. So let's say 10 degrees is right there. And then we know the period is going to be 720 degrees. So when it comes full circle, when it starts repeating itself, it will be at 730 degrees because of the, or the, the right shift to 10. Okay, and then the amplitude we've already kind of dealt with that, it's going to bounce between 2 and negative 4. <coughs> so, again, I'm going to look at halfway points. Halfway between 10 and 730, well, half of 720 would be 360. So then I know, if we're looking at this, let's add 360 to 10, this would be 370 degrees that it'll be halfway through its cycle, okay? Remember, cosine starts at its peak, so I know it's going to start at this point, it's going to end on the same line, and at 370, it's going to be at its valley. That'll be its low point. So at this point, I think we can fill it in, and then it's going to continue in this manner. So a lot of the things from sine and cosine carry over. Everything, we do the amplitude, the period, the horizontal shift, the vertical shift, the same. We're going to make the same lines. We're going to make the same marks to ourselves. The only difference is where it starts. So cosine starts at its peak. Sine starts at the midline.